Some three or five years ago and ever since I've heard the question pop up here or there. Why are comics so addictive? I guess the first time from a YouTuber called Sleepy Reader. And a second question lurked in the background. Why do you, you as in the rest of society, why do you have problems with my addiction? Back then I opposed the second question saying that nobody really bothers with my obsession and everyone's tolerant and yada yada. But since then my obsession has become a full-grown addiction, metaphorically speaking of course, and the misunderstanding and disbelief towards me has grown as well. How can someone like me, who's at least not totally demented and retarded, can be almost 50 years old and still so childish to be involved with funny books? Which leads me back to the first question, why are comics so addictive? Funny thing is, nobody who has at least one bit of a knowledge about comics beyond Mickey Mouse and Tintin asks this question. So when I'm asked this particular question, why are comics so addictive, I'm usually confronted with a member of humanity who has not really a clue about comics. So the best strategy would be to give him or her some comics to read and talk about it afterwards. But often this is not an option because they need to be convinced before they agree on doing some quote unquote of homework. So okay, why are comics so addictive? It's of course a question worth pondering even beyond self-defense purposes. Let's start with the basics. Comics are a medium like literature or movies, so since there are bookworms and movie junkies, it should be no surprise that there are comic addicts, metaphorically speaking, as well. Actually, it should be a surprise if there would be a medium with no one quote-unquote off addicted to or at least no one that could relate to it. Every medium relates to our senses, or at least some of them, or the other way around, as long as we have senses to perceive a medium, there's uh, the opportunity to, to dock on. So first point, we can state the very obvious fact that comics are a visual medium, hence using our by far most important sense. They are, therefore, easy to absorb. And the basic rules how to read a comic are familiar for most of us since early childhood. And you can read a comic pretty fast in comparison to a prose novel. The comic medium is a complex but at the same time simple medium. You don't have to go to great expenses to make one. For instance. Especially in European and indie comics, it's pretty common that the artist, writer, colorist, letterer and editor is the same person. Even the creative teams for a mass-produced mainstream title are relatively small in comparison to the production staff of a movie. So, as a comic reader, you get a more particular individual piece of art, very generally speaking, of course. All the points I've mentioned up to this point could be of course turned around against comics in arguing that the comic medium is just a medium for the childish and lazy ones, obviously mistaking simple for worthless. Of course you could discuss what should actually be wrong with being childish but I don't want to go that route here. Getting your points and stories across with pictures is as old as art history, which I try to prove in a couple of videos, starting with the cave paintings from Lascaux and Altamira. And there are few things that enjoy a, pub, uh, that enjoy a public, este public esteem as art history. But if you want to state the obvious that comics are a big part of art history, you have to draw the simple conclusion 
that you can enjoy a comic for the same reasons as you can enjoy another piece of art from Rembrandt or Picasso. It's part of the human condition to think and talk with pictures and we can witness another human being's thoughts and ideas materialize as art. We humans can communicate this way through decades and centuries from one continent to the other. Despite of local traditions, it's a global medium, almost independent of the language you actually speak, even though it helps your understanding to know the language in which the caption boxes and speech bubbles are written in, of course. We can develop our own individual preferences compare pictures and panels, rearrange the sequences in our head, skip backwards in time, like it's possible to walk backwards through an art museum. In short, like when you're reading a prose novel, it's possible or rather necessary to create your own mind movie. Not to speak of the magic that happens actually in the gap between the panels. I think I could go on for hours and hours, but to finish and rest my case, I just summarize my pointless musings. Well, the bold assessment, comics are one of the most fun and clever ways to waste your time. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.